remember that you never don't understand nothing, okay? <laughs> Why can't I just be normal? Hello there! You know, I just realized something. Anytime I feel like doing anything bookish in my house, I'm like, I'm gonna film that. And then it turns into a week-long vlog, so welcome. The glasses are back because this is what I look like without glasses. Honestly, it's not even that bad. Um, if I go like this, you can see it more. But you know what? I'm not wearing my glasses because dark circles happen. And these, this is literally how I walk around my house. So I don't feel like I should like hide the fact that I am a little bit sick. Not sick, I have allergies, like really, really bad allergies. And because my sinuses are clogged up, it gives me really, really deep dark circles. I haven't been sleeping well because allergies. Although last night was really great because no sleep paralysis and also no asthma because I have asthma. Anyway, let's go back to the bookish thing I was doing. So, I was kind of looking at my TBR. I counted up all my Kindle books and on my Kindle I have 51 unread books. And I counted up my TBR and I have technically 44 books. All right, here's my TBR shelf. So anyway, I was going through this, and then I realized that this part over here has some books that honestly, I'm not sure I'm going to read. I think I bought these, and I might read them someday, but the reality is I mostly bought them to support the authors who are my friends. And this is not saying that my friends' books are bad but basically that I bought all of their books and some of them I felt like reading and some of them I only bought to support them, which I feel pretty good about, honestly. So, I'm gonna do some rearranging of my TBR shelf. Oh, down here I have more of my TBR because I did a haul and they just stayed down here. So what I wanna do is I wanna bring those books because these ones I've already read. We've established this, okay? We've been over this and this is just the book, the book that I am unhauling. Oh. Such a pretty cover. Why did you have to not be to my liking? So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically just gonna comb through the books and I'm gonna show you the ones that I'm kind of soft on hauling. It's not that I'm unhauling them, it's that I have come to the realization that while they bring me joy to have, I'm not gonna be picking them up anytime soon. And there's a few of them, so I'm gonna show you what they are, all right? Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Okay, so I got the books out and I'm gonna show them to you. Again, this is nothing against the authors, this is nothing against these books, it's just that honestly, I just it's so strange to hear sirens around the house. Like, I hope everyone's okay. Let's, we'll, let's wait for them to pass. Also, I might be looking kind of like rough with the dark circles and everything, but my skin is doing really well. Again, these are not bad books. These are just books that I bought to support my the authors. And every time I see them on my TBR, I get kind of like weighed down. I don't know if you know that feeling of like feeling <sighs> like, oh, I'm never gonna get to that. I'm never gonna get to that but I want to still own it because I support these authors. So I'm gonna put away um, Pronto Se de Noche by Jesus Cañadas. This is actually a really, really dark book and Jesus told me that himself. Spanish writers are really, really good at putting you in the place of like really horrible stories. I don't know how to explain it. It's the same for horror movies. If you've seen Spanish horror movies, I mean, if you've watched Wreck, that movie wrecked me. Why can't I just be normal? Anyway, I don't plan on getting to this anytime soon. I think this book is one of those books where I bought it because I really love the author and I want to own it and I want to show it, but I'm not sure that I want to read it. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone. Please let me know if that makes sense to you. Okay, then I have, and as you can see, I already tried reading this book. Then I have the second book in the Leyendas de Oniria series which is Lagrimas de Sauce and then I have the third book which is La Sombra del Bardo. Now there's nothing wrong with these books. This was written by my friend Minerva Gallofre and she became a friend after I read her books so her friendship and my enjoyment of her books have nothing to do with each other. The problem is I didn't realize that we weren't gonna follow the same characters throughout the series. This is actually like 
generational like we go through entire eras from more medieval fantasy to more modern times more steampunky so I really loved and fell in love with the characters of the first story so when I started reading the second story and realized that they were growing old and that we're actually gonna follow a new cast and that's going to continue happening that's not my thing and I just kind of wish that these characters had all coexisted in the same time frame I might still pick this up one day but I just gotta get over the whole it's not the same characters that I fell in love with series and seeing them on my shelf it makes me feel really guilty like I'm guilt written I'm like why am I reading all these other books when I have these books and the reality is because I don't want to read them right now in fact is there any other book wait a minute I think that it's the same name in English if it's not I'll just insert an image here of this book well this book the cover a plus. This is my husband's book. Okay, no, I'm leaving this on my TBR. I just read the synopsis and I'm like, yes, girl, yes. So, this is going back. The other one I'm kind of undecided about is The Godfather by Mario Puzo. First of all, it's on the long... No, it's actually not on the longer side. It looks longer than it is. But this, again, this is a really dark tale and... It's not that I don't like dark tales. I love dark tales. But the problem is that just like with this one, this is so realistic that it kind of makes me anxious. Like they, these things exist, <laughs> you know? So I don't know. I don't know about this one. I might keep it there. I'm, I'm, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Whenever I think about a TBR, I'm like, oh, I have to add that there. I have to add it. I have to add it so I can finish and I can read it which I don't know if I feel like that's a healthy mentality to have about a book. You know what? I'm leaving it in my TBR and if in the next two months I don't pick this up, then it's going in my soft... Why do I keep thinking DNF? In my soft on-haul, which is not an on-haul. They're just going in the bottom shelves where the books that I don't plan on reread anytime soon or that I don't like as much go but that I still want to keep and and then I found this one which uh, thank you so much for everyone that commented on Twitter where I posted my please recommend your favorite book to movie adaptations I really loved all of your recommendations the problem is I'm trying to do this for the book to movie adaptation blind date project again and a lot of the times I had already either seen the movie or read the book so I was like guys you're recommending me all of these amazing things but I can't use them but I can use The Wife by Meg Wolitzer for that video so I'm doing it again this time I'm only doing three books because when I was editing that video I realized that if I had just kept it to what's it called three books it would have been perfect but i think i made it way too long by doing four books so i'm doing three books this is the third one you'll get to find out the other two soon okay well not soon these videos take me forever to do because i have to read them and then i have to watch the movie and we've talked about me not liking to watch movies so what do we do with you yeah okay we're putting you back on the tv show. so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go get the books that are down there that i haven't read and put them back here and I already feel so much better. I was also debating between these two. Moby Dick by Herman Melville and The Iliad by Carolyn Alexander. But actually, I, every time I look at this book, I'm like, yes, I want to read you. But this is such a summer book for me. And this would probably be the only book I read in a month in the summer because in the summer I get super slumpy. So uh, this is like such a great book to read by the poolside. I know that sounds weird to you. But it doesn't to me. And then Moby Dick. I don't feel any like negative emotions when I say that I haven't read this book par partially because it's basically a weapon. You know, you throw this at someone and you run, girl. You run. Run, Forrest, run! And also, I kind of want to read this in the autumn. Anyway, it doesn't ne like it doesn't generate bad feelings that I haven't read it. So these two are staying. All right, the other two books that I kind of was iffy on, but I decided to keep them for Halloweenish time. And because this one came really highly recommended by Emma from a couple of books I love. I'm sorry, Emma. I know that I seem like a crazy stalker. I'm really not. Either way, I live on the not the other side of the world. 
but I can't leave this country. So uh, that's another that's another story for another time. I'm actually exiled in this country. Fun fact, I always give you like these little fun facts about me. I love incest. I'm exiled. I worked for a porn magazine. Writing smut. Oh my god, I dog-eared this book. I dog-ear. Don't, I don't care. These are my books. I can do whatever I want. But anyway, I was really liking it. But then it, my mental health went down the drain and like got stuck in the sewers. It was a really bad time. So this was not the time to be reading this. And then I got this one. I told you for chapter stacks, like read along book club thing. And I read it and this is supposed to be really disturbing and stuff. So again, saving these for Halloween. I'm cool with it. I actually, I'm excited about this now. See, now that I took off the books that were making me a little anxious, I feel better. Now, I'm gonna go get the books down there, which you have already seen. Those are the books that I recently hauled in my, well, it's not the last video for you, but it's the last video that I put up because today is Tuesday, and Tuesday, I don't know what date. I just checked, it's Tuesday the 12th, so, yeah, these are all books that you saw in my video that went up on the 11th. I'll link it up in the cards, which I think is this side. I always do like this. Darle a tu cuerpo alegría, Macarena. All right, I'm going to get the books and I'm going to put them back on the shelf. I'm going to rotate you a little bit so that you can see me. I'm going to zoom you in. So as you saw, now my TBR is so much better. I like it a lot better. But I also decided to update you in case you guys didn't watch that long ass week long vlog, which is a two parter because it was that long. I made like a feature length director's cut extended edition version of a week long vlog, which I keep saying weekend vlog. No, it was a week long. It was a whole week. But anyway, I decided to get rid of almost all of the books that were in that vlog that I said that I was going to keep. So I decided to get rid of Assumed Guilty by Scott Turo. I decided to get rid of Mis Tentaciones by Fernando Cajetola. I decided to get rid of La Venganza del Asesino Par by Reyes Calderón because even though Reyes Calderón is a really famous writer in Spain, honestly, I don't feel like reading this book. I was keeping it for the author and the same thing happened to this one, which the, the synopsis of, where is it? Does it go like that? Like you care, unless you can read Spanish, even though Reyes Calderón is a really good author and even though this book, the synopsis interested me, the reality was that it was just gonna sit there staring at me being like, you're not reading me, you're not reading me, bitch. And I did, we don't need that in our lives. So getting rid of that one. Um, I did say I was getting rid of Cot, which has everything I would love in it except that it's from a teenage perspective and you have already seen my video about why I don't like to read from teenage perspectives. So going away. I'm also getting rid of Los Puentes del Mañana and El Mar de los Hombres Libres because I just don't like keeping weapons as books. <laughs> I was not right. I don't like, I don't like big books and I cannot lie. All right. So the other, the only books I kept that I'm really sorry, I really try not to keep books that don't have English translations because I'm well aware that this is an English channel even though i am bilingual actually i can understand more than three languages but we're not going to get into that you know i don't like to be recommending a book like hey this book was amazing it was the best book i've ever read and then having you be unable to read it so i only kept three i kept juan antonio Sebrián, el mariscal de las tinieblas then we have king mccurk gala muse or demon and then i have the profane abbey by Montserrat Rico Gongora, and um, this is about the Holy Grail and Nazis. So basically, they just stole the whole Indiana Jones saga and put it in a Spanish book. I'm for it. <sighs> I have a class in like an hour or so, so I'm gonna get ready for that. Uh, thank you so much for coming back to these videos. As always, thank you for like putting up with me. <laughs> basically and remember to like subscribe comment do whatever you want to do i support you and what you want to do 
And yeah, remember I post videos every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I'm gonna start posting on Sundays too. Yeah, gotta make my work for myself. Like, would it be me if I made my life easier for myself? No. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for coming back. Thank you. I can't believe you guys watch my videos. Honestly, this is not me humble bragging or anything. I just... When I started this channel, and you can see it in my booktube newbie tag, I felt like I was talking to no one. And now I feel that I'm talking at least to someone. And that means the world to me. So thank you so much. Even if I know this video is probably not going to be the most um, clicked on video, I don't care. Because as long as one of you watches it, that's still more than zero. That's what I always tell my students when they're like, I didn't understand anything from that listening. And they're, I'm like, no, you understood something. You didn't understand everything, but you understood something. You know, like, you caught words. That's more than nothing. So if you ever have listenings at school, if you're trying to learn another language, remember that you never don't understand nothing. <laughs> okay? <laughs> what was that random teacher speech? Anyway, I'm going to take a thumbnail for this video now, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye, guys. Oh, that hurts my knees. I'm on the tips of my toes, and it's not fun. You're done.